morning guys today I figured we'd do a quick little tutorial I've had a lot of you guys ask for a little bit more detail on how I make my wire frames so I figured I sit down and show you guys so I've got all my stuff laid out and I'm just gonna do a quick tutorial showing how to make a basic wire frame and then kind of going over certain things that I do for different types of wire frames Okay, so here are all the things that you're going to need to make a wire frame, minus my glue gun because it's setting off to the side warming up. So right here is a 14 gauge wire and this one is a 16 gauge wire. Normally I'll use 14 for larger creatures and 16 for smaller. And then if I need to double up on my wires, I can do that as well. And then I have a 20 gauge wire. This is just a crafting wire. These are galvanized steel. And then you're going to need something that can cut the larger wires and then something that can bend the smaller wires. So I've got these two tools here and then something to measure the wires with to make sure everything is the correct size. So I like using tape measures for this because you can go along the shape of the wire and you don't have to bend the wire straight to measure it. It just makes it a lot easier. And then paper and pen, you can use pencil if you want, it's just to keep track of the sizes of the wires that you need. So I write everything down. And then you're also going to need some type of pattern. Normally what I do is I usually have the fabric pieces all sewn together and I measure those, but right now I haven't gotten to that for this creature, so I'm just going to use the paper pattern that I drew out. So basically what I need to do first is I need to measure where the head is all the way down to the tip of the tail. And then I need to measure from where this tip of the toe is, up the shoulder blade, across the belly, and down the leg to the other toe. So those are our two main measurements for our wires. Now doing the length of the body, normally what I do is I give it roughly about like three extra inches because I need some wire to go inside of the clay head that we make. So it's good to always give yourself a little bit extra wire. So normally I go with about three and then I measure the length of the body. So we're looking at about 21. So I will kind of sketch out a basic shape to remember where everything is. So that will be 21. And then the legs, I have them placed where I want them. Normally I'll give them like two or three extra inches on each foot as well, just to be safe. You can always cut wire and shorten it. You can't really make it grow longer. So I take that measurement as well, following the shape of the leg. We're looking at about 28 for that. So this one is a small piece, so I won't need like my thicker gauge wire, so I'm just gonna use the 16. So I'm just going to measure out the back piece first, the 21 inches, and I'm just gonna take my measuring tape and follow the length of the wire until I get to that number on the tape measure. And 21 is right here. And then I'm just going to take my cutters and cut that off. So that's one of our pieces of wire. The next one is for the legs. So that is going to be a 28 inch. I'm gonna do basically the same thing, just following the length of the wire until I get to 28 inches. Right there. I'm gonna cut that. Then I'm going to take the wire that we just cut for the legs to get the other wire for the legs. I do that mainly because if I slipped with measuring the tape measure, the wires won't be a different size. So I'm using the wire that we cut to measure the next wire. So I'm just going to do the same thing that I did with the tape measure and follow the length of the wire. Keeping them nice and tightly together so that they'll be the same length. I follow that and then it ends right here. And I'm just going to cut that. Okay, so we have our three pieces of wire. Okay, so we need our pattern again for this. And basically what we're doing is we're now shaping these wires. So I'm gonna take that three extra inches and I'm gonna bend it into a loop that I'll use later to add to the clay head. So normally I just kind of like wrap it around like this and just kind of make a little like thing that will kind of work well to hold inside of a head. I usually like doing something like this because when you glue it, all the extra looping bits kind of just lock into the glue. So it gives it some extra strength. I'm gonna mark kind of where the legs are gonna connect. So that's mainly where I'm going to bend my wire and that's where the tail is gonna start too. So I'm just going to do that. And then the very tip of the wire for the tail, I need to round off so that it's not sharp. So just take my 
pliers and bend that off. That way we don't have anything poking through our body. So we got the spine basically, now we're going to work on the legs. So for this, I normally take both wires at the same time so I can bend them exactly the same. Okay, now remember we did have a few extra inches which will end up bending, so I'm going to make sure that that's there. And here, I'm going to bend there, and then I'm going to follow the length of the shoulder blade in the shape of it, bend roughly about there. Then I'm going to use this one and measure out the distance between the legs and bend there. And then we're going to bend the shape of the back leg as well. Roughly like that. Okay, so now all of our wires are bent. Clearly I had a lot more extra wire at the very end, but again, we're going to cut those later. But I'm going to wait until the body itself is put together so I know how long to make the wires. Because when I sew the pattern and everything together, it's going to be a little bit smaller than what I have here. Okay, now we need to add these all together. So I'm going to take the piece where the spine is, and right where the front legs are going to connect, I'm going to take a piece of my 20 gauge wire, and I'm going to kind of wrap that around right around here. So I'm going to wrap that, just starting it off right there, and then I'm going to take these and I'll make sure that they're placed evenly and start wrapping here. So we're going to combine them. Normally I'll let them twist because they do this naturally when I start wrapping. I'm not sure why they do that, but it just tends to happen. And then while I'm wrapping, I'm also going to go and wrap around the individual wires for the legs. So I'm just going to go around them. Normally I do twice each. Do that. And just continue going down this part. And you want to hold the wires as close as you can together and as tight as you can. So I'm stopping roughly about halfway because we're going to take another wire and do the other half. And then one thing you can also do to make sure that these are more secure is you can kind of like loop these over, kind of have them wrapping around the wire for the spine as well. And I'll just kind of make sure that the spine itself doesn't wiggle as much. Then we're going to do the same thing that we did up here, just kind of backwards. So we're going to take another piece of wire and wrap it around the tail base. And then I'm going to make sure to hold these nice and tight and start wrapping around here as well. Making sure to go around the back leg wires too. And then we'll just take the rest of the wire up the length of the back. I really did make the back legs really long. <laughs> So this is just a basic wire frame that you can use. Now I will show a few modifications that you can do. So let's say you want to do wings. Obviously you would kind of do the same thing. You would have a pattern set up for your wing and you'd figure out where the wire for that wing is going to go. So I'm not going to do all that because I'm not making a wing right now, but I am going to show an example of how to add that to the wire frame. So let's start off with just one piece of wire and let's pretend there are uh, wings off to the side on each end. So we're just going to take this part of the wire and we're going to bend it in half. So we're just going to bend it in half, make sure it's kind of nice and straight on both sides. And again, we have wires here for where the wings are, so pretend there's wings. So normally what I'll do is I'll take this part and this is where we're going to stabilize it onto the body. So I'll go under and I'll take these and I'll go around what we already have connected here. So you can just kind of place it and then wrap 20 gauge wire around this to combine everything again. Or you could take this, wrap it around, kind of like how we did the back legs, we wrapped it around the spine. We can do that with this as well and then take 20 gauge and wrap it all together. Now another thing you can do is let's say your clay head is too heavy for your wire frame and it's drooping. Instead of starting over completely with a new wire frame, you can support these wires with extra wires. So let's pretend this is a lot longer because I would normally start off with a piece of wire bent. So what I'll do is I'll take a piece of wire, I'll measure the length of the neck and the legs in the front and I will double that and then I'll bend that wire in half. 
I'll start off, kind of loop it right around here where I have that looped point, and I'll start wrapping it around the neck, and then I'll take each piece of wire and I'll wrap around the legs. So basically I'll break off the two pieces of wire that are going around the neck, and I'll start wrapping each one around a separate leg. And that'll kind of help enforce it. You won't really need to reinforce the back legs. Normally if a clay piece is too heavy, you just need to reinforce the front legs. Because um, just the neck being reinforced isn't going to be enough if these are not holding up the head as well. Now this wire frame is going to be for a creature that I'm not going to give clay legs. It's going to be mainly plush. So I'm not going to have that part set up, but I'm going to kind of show you roughly how I would add clay legs to a wire frame. These are longer than they're supposed to be. So when we're putting our creature together, we're going to measure and figure out how long these actually need to be. And then we're going to bend them. So the end is going to be kind of looped like this. So you'll have the arm and it'll loop up and they'll kind of reinforce that one spot. Now where the clay leg is, we're also going to have a loop coming out of the back of it because of the way I normally make my wire frames for my feet. So you're going to have a loop here and a loop here. So what you're going to basically do is you're going to combine these two things with a 20 gauge. So you can wrap around the whole body of it and then you can also kind of weave in and out between the two to really lock that in there. So that's how I usually add my um, clay legs to a wire frame. Now what I'll do with any portions that have the 20 gauge holding pieces together, I'll hot glue over this to kind of cover and protect it. So it's not really a supportive thing as it's just to kind of help kind of protect what you wrapped around. It'll also kind of cover up any sharp bits because the end of the 20 gauges can be kind of sharp and you can hot glue over that so that you don't have to worry about it poking through the body or anything like that. And it just kind of protects the fabric body from the wire frame because you will have rubbing and a lot of this is actually kind of rough. So I will normally just kind of just hot glue over the whole part. Usually the spine of the creature doesn't bend too too much, especially with something this short. So I'll just hot glue all the way from this point all the way to here and then just go all the way around the wires so everything is covered. And I won't just do this for where the spine is, I'll also do this to cover up where we added the clay legs because there's going to be 20 gauge wire wrapped around that portion as well. Okay guys, and that is how we made this little wire frame. I think it came out pretty good. Um, this is basically just the simplest way I can make a wire frame. There are obviously more advanced ways of doing it, and there's also different ways of doing it. If you don't want to use wires, you could use uh, ball joints, but those are extremely expensive. So I tend to just do my wire frames because they're very cost effective and just a lot easier sometimes. But yeah, like I was saying, you could add wires for wings, different things like that. If you have something that has like multiple legs, you would have to do something just slightly different with how you would combine them. But you mainly just want to make sure that this part doesn't like wiggle around. You don't want the spine kind of like twisting when the legs aren't. So you want to make sure that this part is just nice and solid and it'll give you a good wire frame. Anyways guys, I'm sorry today wasn't a vlog. I thought this would be a nice video to make up for it. Um, I just too busy with the holidays and trying to get editing done, so this week was actually extremely boring. I had nothing really to show you because I was sitting at the computer all day just editing other videos. <laughs> Anyways, you may see the creature for this in another tutorial. Not a full tutorial on the whole making of him, but I do want to do another tutorial where I show you guys how I fur my faces and I make the fur trimmings for doing it. It's just another thing similar to the wire frame where it just takes a lot of time and I don't want to have it in every single video. So that will probably be another Friday video later on. Um, I'm pretty sure next week will be a vlog, but yeah, I, I'm gonna have him show his face somewhere else when I have a little bit more of him done. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!